Hi guys, I am surrounded by an absolute smorgasbord of art supplies because today I got in the mail <clears throat> what I plan to use as my bullet journal for 2019 and the rumor is it can take most everything you throw at it, not everything, but we are going to test it with <laughs> a lot of stuff. So normally I use Leuchtturm 1917s. This is the one I've been using this year. This is the one I was using last year. But I pretty much just stuck to a lot of the basics. Microns, um, a little bit of the Tri Plus multi-liners. Yeah, fine liners, these little guys. Nothing too fancy. A bit of Faber Castell pits. I think this was my fountain pen. That did okay. But I wasn't using much in the way of paint. I sure wasn't using Copics. Um, I have a lot of art supplies that I want to be able to use. I didn't get too far in that one, did I? Uh, this year is the same. Not too much variation in the pens I'm using. So, let's do first impressions first. I haven't opened it other than releasing that little tab to get into it. Okay, so first, this sucker is hefty. Like, it's got some some weight on it. So I guess if you're looking for something everyday carry in your purse, um, this does have weight to it, which I'm kind of liking. This probably will not be carried around in my purse much. So, who cares? This is glorious. It's an Archer and Olive. Did I say that already? I don't even think I said that. It's an Archer and Olive. And I have been wanting to try this for a long time. And I didn't think I was going to bullet journal this year because I have all my Hobonichis, but I think we've established that I have an issue. And apparently I thought I needed to still be able to bullet journal, traditional bullet journaling, um, for a few things. So I'm doing it. I don't care. So here it says that it's 160 GSM ultra thick paper, which is selling point number one for me. It says no ghosting or bleeding, perfect for markers, fountain pens, and even paint. Selling point number two for me. It's dot grid number three. It's gorgeous. Like, okay, well, each term, I love you. And I really love that you number your pages because I don't think this does. But aside from, from some pretty stunning colors, it's nothing awe-inspiring. So yeah, it leaves me the ability to slap some stickers on there now that I'm not so prissy about it, but <clears throat> this is gorgeous, and I haven't even opened it yet. So Archer and Olive, based in Texas, well done you. So let's get in here. I really hope my camera is showing everything. If you know anything about me, this is going to end up in my little book of ephemera because I'm that level of nerd. Selling point number 
Where are we at? Six. Pen loop. Let's do test number one, shall we? Obviously, this is going to fit in there. And this fits in there. Next level up would be... Fits. And this is the biggest thing I've got. That fits. Very snugly, but it fits. Okay. Pen loop win. It has an elastic band just like the Lloyd's Terms do. You can see it's left marks. I hope you can see. It's left a little indentation here from the elastic band and down here I don't know if that'll recover but my band will probably be there most of the time oh it's got a lovely leatherish feel to it it's quite thick in comparison to a fairly I guess I got about halfway more than halfway through this one, so it's a little thicker than brand new, but you can see the comparison on the thickness. They are both A5s, I believe. Um, another selling point, where are we at? Seven. The pages are white, whereas on the Leutsch term, they're a little off-white. They're cream. And I wanted white pages. These are... I don't remember the GSM on these. Don't remember. But this is not super thin. It's not, it's not like Tamoy River paper or anything thin like that. Just your average paper. This is thick you guys I can do some damage on this paper how many pages was it did we say <clears throat> 160 dot grid pages so 160 GSM 160 dot grid pages these are about 249 this is 249 this doesn't have dots okay so this is only 160 pages, but they are thick, gorgeous, make your mark kind of pages. Yeah, that feels really good. Okay, so inside, again, crisp, white, glorious pages, place to write your details, a little bit of branding, and then you go straight into your dot grids and they are not numbered pages as well so if you are hung up on that these are not numbered you'll have to write your own numbers in if you need them to be let's count how many one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty 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 I'm going to double check. Twenty-six. I'm going to guess that it's the same for... But... Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. So that's the same. Oh my gosh, why did I wait so long? Like the things I could do. Anyways, back here you have a pocket, just like you do in the Lloyd's Charm. 
I am not finding any indexing stickers, but I've never used mine anyway. If that's a thing for you, I'm not finding any of these. But again, I don't care. What else? It's got two bookmarks, just like the Lloyd's term, except for they are not different bookmarks. So if you tend to remember what is being marked based on the look of the bookmarks, these are same Z's. Whereas in the Lloyd's terms, they're different to help you differentiate between what you are marking. Um, what else? I think it's time to throw some art supplies at this be at this beauty. Okay, stay tuned.
so I knew Copic would go through. Copic goes through everything. It goes through marker paper made specifically for marker art. So I just wanted to see how bad it might get. It holds up comparably to other stuff, I guess. Copics are just, yeah. Don't ever anticipate using the backs of your pages with Copics. Um, everything else is a win. I can't, there's, I can't see the Sharpie. I see a little dot of something and it's Sharpie. But other than that, and I pressed, like I pressed pretty hard with the unis. You can't see the ink, you can just see where I pressed, like the texture of where I pressed. Here is where the distress spray is. And you can tell that something wetter was there, but nothing substantial. And then where I have the gouache and the watercolor, you can't even tell. Um, and I, I did it fairly wet for the watercolor. That's a little sticky. But yeah, like that is saturated. And you can't really tell. I might see one dot next to the printed dot, but I don't even know if that's from the distress spray or just a, a fluke. So yeah. I don't know what else I have that I could throw at it that would be any harsher than a Sharpie. I mean, Copic was just a Hail Mary that didn't work out, but <clears throat> I don't think I have anything else that I could possibly throw at this. I guess the pen test speaks for itself. I just, yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do on this side now. Maybe, here, I know what I'll do. I'll get crazy with this watercolor. I just don't want the oil pastels to mark up the other page, so. Okay, I'm gonna take and do I'm going to be a super wet painter and put a lot of water on this page. Okay.
Okay. I can't really foresee myself painting with more water than that. You can see that there's a little bit of buckle. But I don't think you could possibly expect less than that. I mean, for just your basic notebook that isn't watercolor paper, some buckles expected. There you have it. I've tested all the things that I can think of that I, I mean that I would re potentially use in here anyway. Um, do me a favor if you use the Archer and Olive notebooks, comment below for me and tell me how you're liking yours. If you have found a medium that does not hold up too well in the Archer and Olive, let me know. Um, if you have discovered other things you don't like about it, or things that I haven't mentioned that you have fallen in love with, please let me know. Okay, so, first impressions, a plus. Pen test, medium test, A plus. Oops, wasn't dry yet. I am currently really happy with this. I think I might spend some more time this weekend and the next week setting up for 2019. But, oh, okay, there's the other thing. There's no actual real index pages that like the Lloyd Sturm has, but you can do that here on the cover, inside cover. You can do it here. Just take a page or two here and do it. Well worth it. Like who cares about page numbers at this point or indexes because I'm gonna be able to do so much more in here than I really could in the Lloyd Sturm. Okay guys, that is it for now. And until next time, go make something.